ok. So, now let us I will talk about another way of a way of generalizing um, uh, another a way of another way of looking at mixed strategies and also goes into this question of uh, of limited rationality or bounded rationality and so on ok. So, when we what we observe let us go back again to the case where there are finitely many pure strategies for for each player. Now, when what happens is uh, in that in in a, in that sort of a game is that any player basically generically player would become in, uh, indifferent between playing multiple multiple pure strategies. You know that's the nature of in the Nash equilibrium. That's what would happen that if a player becomes indifferent between playing multiple pure strategies and then he randomizes over those. Now all those pure strategies are the ones that give him the best payoff. So, any uh, the one the best expected payoff assuming the others guy, other guys are paying their mixed strategy ok. This is the structure this is the the, the way the, uh, the Nash equilibrium behaves. Now, which what that effectively means is that if any strategy is even a little bit suboptimal if any pure strategy is even slightly suboptimal right it gives even a slightly lower payoff than any of the others the player would give it 0 probability. Right. He gives it. Uh, he give, uh, you know. He gives probability. He gives no. Uh, even 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 he cannot. He it's irrational for him to give even a slight amount of uh, slight weight to that uh, to that uh, to that strategy. Now this people have wondered if if this is this is really uh, you know representative and can this be generalized and so on. You know, in many different uh, from many different angles they have thought about this. There is also an effort to try and reconcile game theory with observed data. You know, people when you observe that this is what has happened in the past, this is the way the players have played in the past. Can you match that with uh, with some kind of uh, the uh, the uh, the outcomes that game theory is suggesting? Okay. So one of the ways people have uh, thought about this is that this is uh, is that this particular property that you know you give zero probability to anything suboptimal this kind of hyper optimization is a little too too strong. So, instead of players playing best responses they say that we, we should just expect that players play better responses. So, they play better than something that is uh, that is obviously bad, but they, they are very close to they are going to be close to the best, but not necessarily the best ok. Which means that you have to allow for players to play occasionally let us say or with some pro small probability a suboptimal strategy also. Okay, so some so, so suboptimal strategies also could get some positive way. Now, if you think about it this way, then uh, it basically is enlarging the space of strategies in a kind of behavioral way, where you are actually bringing in behavioral uh, characteristics that players can make mistakes, players can get nervous, uh, players can uh, you know uh, can develop cold feet at the time of play, etc. All of these kind of you know human nature behavioral characteristics are being somehow being attempted to bring it. So, this is this leads to this concept of what is called a quantal response equilibrium ok. So, I will no best response really means only the whatever is optimal given what others are playing, but in Nash equilibrium the best response is uh, it would be that a player becomes indifferent between a certain set of pure strategies, a subset of his pure strategies. So, I mean, well, a player would have to settle on a model before What do you mean? I mean he, has he has to, to maximize his, uh, so he is just a utility maximizer. No, no. So, be, uh, so best response is assuming uh, what are the, fixing what the others are playing. What is what is the optimal uh, uh, thing for the player to play? That is all that uh, best response means. So this leads to, as I said, a concept of what is called quantal response. And now the interesting thing about quantal response is because it there are all these behavioral elements brought in, right? It also is very nice, uh, very um, sort of. Um, easy to merge with any kind of data sciences. So, if you have lots of past data, if you want to uh, in which say players have played in a certain way, 
like for example, you know, there could be an evader and a, um, and a pursuer and an evader and this is a pursuer is trying to or, or an intruder that is being that is trying to get get into a network and uh, and there are there are uh, detectors trying to detect it and there this this cat and mouse game between uh, between a det intruder and detector ha has gone on for multiple rounds and you have had data from that from those rounds but you do not know what you know there are some elements of the uh, of the game that are not fully specified and all you know is this this past data like for example you don't know what exactly is the utility function of the intruder you don't know what exactly is the uh, what are the uh, 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 what is exactly the utility function for the uh, for uh, for the uh, for the uh, for the detector etc etc you may not even know all the space the entire space of strategies that are available and all of these things some of these things are are just pre you just have this data of what has happened in the past and from there you want to try and think about the game so one of the things that you can do in uh, with using the quantile response is sort of UA is very easily blended in with uh, you know any any other kind of data scientific tool okay so so i will just explain this uh, explain this right now so okay so to motivate this let's look at uh, let's uh, i'll to motivate this, I sh we should look at this problem of what is called matching pennies. So, very simple, simple game. Um, two players have two coins. Okay, the coins have two sides, heads and tails. Now, uh, the I'm I'm writing this uh, assuming players are maximizing okay so if the 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 deal for player 1 is that so what they have to do is they uh, they each have two coins they each have their own coin and uh, they have to decide whether they put the coin down with heads facing up or tails facing up okay if both have heads both put it up uh, put heads up then player 1 gets 1 and player 2 gets Zero. So the row player gets one, column player gets zero. If both get, if both put tails, then again player one gets one, and player two gets zero. And on the other hand, if they do not coordinate, that means if player one plays puts heads and the other plays uh, player two puts tails, then player one will get zero and player two will get one, and vice versa as well. If player player one puts tails and player 2 puts heads then player 2 gets 1 and uh, player 1 gets 0. So, in other words player 1 wins when uh, the when their outcomes are the same when the 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 the, the, fa the up, up face is the same for both players player 2 wins when the uh, when the face is different ok. So, this is uh, this is the setup. So, uh, the, uh, the game is uh, you can see the, the, the payoffs and so on are extremely symmetric and it in fact you can also see that there is no uh, there is no pure strategy Nash equilibrium in this this game. Okay. Uh, the main thing is this is a non-cooperative game. So, players have to decide what they want to put uh, without seeing what the other has put obviously. Ok. So, otherwise the game becomes trivial. So, you have to you cannot see what the other has put. So, you the way it is uh, usually played by kids and all that is that they hide the the face and then then they reveal it and then you decide who won ok. So, now, uh, but there is no pure strategy Nash equilibrium, but there is a mixed strategy Nash equilibrium and in fact, there is a unique one ok. So, this has a unique there is only exactly one mixed strategy Nash equilibrium and what do you think that would be? Yeah, because of the symmetry of the problem, it would be it is that um, you play each plays heads stroke tails with probability half. Okay. This is the Nash equilibrium. Now, what we will do is we will um, change this a little bit ok. So, let us change this uh, this problem. Now, what uh, we will replace this one here that I have here this one 
this one is going to be replaced with with the capital X ok and X here is some is something positive. So, with when X is 1 you get back the uh, the old uh, matching pennies with 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 X not equal to 1 it is what is called the asymmetric matching penny. Okay. Now, can you tell me what is the uh, in the, with, with x positive, uh, but uh, uh, any general x there is again a unique mixed strategy Nash equilibrium, but what can you tell me what is that Nash equilibrium? Yeah, so who plays what? What is the row player strategy? So, remember the row player has to make the column player indifferent between his pure strategies, right? No. The row player has to make the column player indifferent between his pure strategies. The column, yeah. So the row player actually ends up uniformly randomizing. Okay, so the row player plays half heads and half tails. Okay, so if he plays uh, tails with heads with probability half and tails with probability half, the column player will uh, becomes indifferent between playing heads or tails. Okay, and now what about the column player? So the column player. He selects heads with probability um, 1 by x plus 1 and uh, it and tails with probability x by x plus 1. Now, what people have argued is that if you look at this um, you know uh, in, in terms of experiments and so on in terms of any kind of empirical data this seems to be a little bit odd. You know one of the things that for example, one of the things that happens in this is that even if you let if you let x say for example go to infinity you keep raising x to infinity player the row player continues to play half and half although x affects his payoff it x is affecting pro the row player's payoff it doesn't affect the column player's payoff but his strategy remains ind independent of x right so you get this uh, uh, So, the row player strategy uh, half heads and half tails is independent of the value of x itself. So, you can make x extremely large you might think. So, if you look at this payoff matrix you might think that the row player would get more inclined towards paying x as x as x gets larger and larger and behaviorally that is exactly what people have found. And you know when x is larger you uh, there is a tendency to play uh, to play heads more right. For, uh, for the row player. On the other hand, what is happening is that the uh, as x gets larger and larger, it is the column player who strategy who is that is changing and the column player starts drifting more towards uh, playing tails ok. So, now one of the ways of sort of um, working around this is is to say that well, this is a this here the expectation is that the reason you are playing half and half here and the reason this is this is 1 by x plus 1 and x by x plus 1 is because because there is a strict expectation of rationality. Suppose we allow players to make to play suboptimal strategies with some probability then your the the outcome the uh, the, the the nature of the outcome would change ok and let us we will see that now. So, let us take for example, so, what people have done is they said let us look at a let us look at how people respond to alternatives. So, so again as I said as at the very outset I had told you that we are not looking for a um, uh, for a behavioral theory to begin with, but I am just giving you a perspective of you know another perspective on how things uh, things have been developed. So, one of the observations that about responding to uh, about responding to uh, you know uh, different uh, alternatives is that you will say suppose you I want uh, I, a player is shown two different sources of light and you are asked he is asked to pick which is the brighter source ok. So, if there is if there are two sources of light say L 1 with intensities suppose L 1 and L 2 then it turns out that he picks L 1 with with uh, with probability L 1 by L 1 plus L 2 and L 2 by with probability L, L 2 by L 1 plus L 2 
okay. So, it this is this is an observation that people have made that essentially if you are if you give two players two different sources of light and ask them to quickly check which one is the brighter one, uh, they they pick L 1 with probability uh, the 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 one with intensity L 1 is chosen with probability L 1 by L 1 plus L 2 and the one with intensity L 2 is chosen by with probability L 2 by uh, L 1 plus L 2. So, if in other words if suppose L 2 is much much brighter than L 1 then you you start tending to 1 mostly people will pick obviously 1 uh, L the 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 light source L 2 but otherwise they would pick a light source L uh, you know L 1 with a slightly lower probability. Anyway, the point is the, uh, the point is this is just a motivation. This was a motivation, and they said, uh, they said, can we use this to sort of think of a different way of of modeling the response of a player? So what you can think of is that player has these he here a player has these choices, right? He has to put put down either heads or tails, and you can think of these as sort of intensities uh, that he is to choose from. He looks at the conditional utility that he gets from each of these alternatives. So, he uh, he or he looks at the let us say the expected utility that he gets from each of these alternatives expectation taken over what the others are going to play ok. So, averaging over what the others would play each player looks at the pure strategy alternatives that he has and then instead of playing the one that is the largest only he will play them in this proportion in the way that he was picking the the uh, the light source so, ok. So, imagine then that h was one light source and tails was another light source giving you a certain utility and you you pick them with a with a certain probability based on the value of the utility. So, the one with that gives you the higher utility you give it just higher probability the one that has lower utility you give it lower probability, but you do give them some probability ok. So, this is how a player is becoming a better responder as opposed to being a best responder. A best responder would simply pick the best response and ignore everything that is suboptimal. But now, even stuff that is suboptimal, even alternatives that are suboptimal are being played with some probability, ok. So, this is so this this motivates a particular type of uh, a particular type of response from the player. So, let us call that let me let us write that out here. So, erase this. So, suppose, uh, so I will just set up the problem ok. First, let us uh, let us suppose you you have a you have n n is your set of players you have s i these are your pure strategies. And you have u i. Okay, so sigma i let den let this denote the a mixed strategy So, capital sigma i is the set of pro, uh, mixed strategies. So, in other words, this is a probability, which is this is a set of probability distributions on S i. Okay. Now, v i j. Okay, I'll this. Uh, this as a function I am going to write this as a function of sigma this is the the expected utility that a player would get player i would get when he plays a pure strategy j ok. So, this here is the expectation summation over x minus i and s minus i of u i of
Okay. So, uh, I will quick uh, carefully show you what this, what I have written here. So, here V i j, when I write V i j, here i here, the, the i denotes the player, i is in n, ok. j is simply the j is, is just an index for the strategy of player i, ok. So, I am looking at some particular strategy, strategy j of player i, ok. Now, here sigma minus i of x minus i is simply the product of the mixed strategies of all the other players, ok. So, it is the, uh, you have some product of sigma k of x k, k if not equal to i, ok. So, and this is with others playing x k. Now, if player i plays the j, his jth pure strategy, this is then the expected payoff that he would get when others play, when the other players play uh, mixed strategy sigma minus i. Is this clear? So, this is what he is going to get from by paying his jth pure strategy. So, you can uh, you can kind of see where I am headed here. So, now we have you get you have expected payoffs or light intensities from every pure pure strategy. You can now ask ok with what probabilities should I be playing my various pure strategies right uh, in uh, keeping this uh, you know uh, keeping this in mind. So, so let us. So, you what what you you say is we, you assume is that player i plays pure strategy j ok player i plays pure strategy j in in his in his set of pure strategies with this probability e, with this probability v uh, v i j of v i j ok that was his expected utility from playing uh, pure strategy j divided by summation over v i j dash where j dash sums over is runs over s i. Now, there is obviously an assumption here v s have to be positive for this uh, for this to work. So, you have to normalize you have to add constants and all that to make sure that this this works out to be a uh, to be a, to be a pro an actual probability. Okay. But uh, once the v, vijs are all positive, you can see that this this now is a mixed strategy for the player. Because if I take the summation over summation over j in s i of sigma i j, this sums to 1 and if the v's are positive, this is also greater than equal to 0. Okay. But remember v i j, the way we wrote it out, this guy is a function of sigma. V i j is a function of sigma. It is a function of what the other, in particular, it is a function of sigma, sigma minus i. Actually, I should write it more, more clearly here. It is a function of sigma minus i. So, it is a function of what the others, what the others are playing. So, you are evaluating it for a pure strategy, a fixed pure strategy and your expectation is taken over the pure strategies of other players. So, you are summation, you are summing over x minus i here. No, with the sigma minus i probability. Sigma minus i is the, is this, is just simply the pr uh, product of the mixed strategy, is the probability with which the others are playing their, their own pure strategies, ok. So, so player k plays pure strategy x k with probability sigma k of x k, you take the product of that. So, that gives you the pro probability with which say x minus i is going to be played and you are play fixing your own pure strategy at, at x i j and you are asking what is the payoff I am going to get from that pure strategy, from my jth pure strategy. Is this clear? So, this is, this is the x i j here is the, uh, if you actually if this is a little bit confusing I can even just put j here itself directly. So, if you, so j itself is the, is, is pure strategy, ok. So, this here is his, is the strategy in SI, ok. So, this is what player i gets when he plays strategy j which is in SI and others play x minus i, ok, alright. So, this is, so we just suppose that this is going to be the, his model for response. He has a, he has, his response has this model that he looks at the various utilities that he gets from his pure strategies and place them in the proportion of the utility, ok. 
remember this is different from the reasoning in Nash. Nash was asking that you play the best response and just that right. You are, here we are saying we look at the utilities and in res, in proportion you are going to uh, play the uh, play the play the various uh, various probabilities. Now, this remember here the v i j's are a function of sigma minus i. These guys are all functions of sigma minus i. That means, these are a function of what the other players are playing ok. So, you now will and if so, what is happening is now you you have this this equation here just defines for you sigma i that the probability is the mixed strategy for player i. You can write out a similar best uh, similar response equation for all players. So, you will get therefore, multiple coupled response equations for all the players ok. So, remember so, in particular let us take the asymmetric matching pennies for, for the asymmetric matching pennies what happens is you get you can see v 1 1. So, v 1 1 is actually equal to x times sigma 2 1. Uh, v 1 2. So, that means, so 1 here is heads and so this is 1, this is 2, okay. this is 1, this is 2 and V 1 2 would be is just sigma 2 2, V 2 1 is sigma 1 2 and sig V 2 2 is sigma 1 1. So, what have I written here? This is the expected uh, utility that player 1 gets when he plays heads. Assuming the others are playing, uh, assuming player the assuming player 2 is playing sigma 2 ok. So, why do you get x times sigma 2 1? Because it is you see it is x times sigma 2 1 plus 0 times sigma 2 2 yeah. So, that that So, sigma i i j this is player i jth pure strategy. Okay. So, uh, so we are just I am just writing h as 1 and t as 2 heads is 1 and t is 2 ok. So, so, sigma 2 1 is basically the probability if you want you can think of this as the pro, this is basically the probability that player 2 plays heads that is sigma 2 1. So, sigma 2 1 is the probability that player 2 plays heads and then similarly sigma 2 2 is the probability that player 2 player 2 plays plays tails. Uh, this is the probability that player player 1 plays tails and this is the probability that player 1 plays heads. Right. So, with this now we get we get these v's. So, these v's have to be are remember a function of sigma minus i. So, they are they are, so so, I so you get equations like this with sigma on the left and sigma on the right one for you get one equations like this for each player right. So, how many equations would you have for uh, for a for player i here? There will be as many as s i right as many as his pure strategies because that defines this ok. The and that you will have uh, 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 one such set for every player. Okay. So you have to solve these simultaneously uh, for to solve for uh, to solve for the sigma. Okay, and it uh, that then is your equilibrium. That is what is called the quantal response. So you solve these simultaneously. Simultaneous solution of these equations gives rise to what is called a quantal response equilibrium. Now, 
you can we can actually for the asymmetric matching pen is we can in fact calculate this in closed form and see what uh, see what it turns out to be turns out that um, sigma 1 1 star that means the probability that player 1 will play heads this turns out to be equal to square root of x divided by 1 plus square root of x and sigma 2 1 star becomes 1 by 1 plus square root of x. So, earlier remember the, uh, the row player was playing half half regardless of what the value of x was that is not the case anymore. Okay. So, you get a you get a, a, a quantal response equilibrium in, in which uh, in, in which you uh, in, you know which depends on the value of x. Now, the thing with the the, the, the sort of this is all well and good trying to you know um, trying to explain behavior, but then the problem with once you go away from the kind of rigor and theory the ex very demanding rigor and theory that we had uh, uh, for uh, when we were developing the rest of uh, you know game theory otherwise. The problem that you have then is that there is now too many too many possible variations are possible right. There is uh, so, you once you come up with some kind of a model that uh, like this that a player should play in proportion with the utility, then you can ask okay why not something else right because so, so for instance sigma you can ask for something like this sigma i j equal to v i j raised to lambda divided by summation v i j dash raised to lambda j dash sums in where lambda here is greater than equal to 0 is is a parameter now you can see this is also a a, a model this is a model of responding uh, of responding you can solve for uh, a, the solve for a quantal response equilibrium with this coin this kind of quantal response model as well ok. It turns out in fact I can tell you what it looks like in closed form a sigma 1 1 star now becomes x raised to lambda divided by lambda square plus 1 divided by 1 plus x raised to lambda divided by lambda square plus 1 and sigma 2 1 star 1 plus x is to lambda square by um, lambda square plus 1. Now, so this is obviously a generalization of what we wrote earlier. If you take lambda equal to 1, we get back the, the light intensity wala model, uh, but but we can have actually any kind any you can take any uh, la, uh, greater than any lambda that is non-negative and it gives you a valid quantal response, uh, quantal response model. Okay. Now, but but here also there is something interesting. We can actually interpret this lambda in a in a very precise way. That we can interpret this lambda as the as the responsiveness of the player, which is that which means for every a small change in utility, how response how responsive is is the player in the, in the sense that if you change the utility by a small amount, how much is the will will that how big a change? is that bringing in his uh, in the mix strategy that he is doing. So, how sensitive is his mix strategy to the changes in the utility that can be tuned by changing the lambda ok. So, you can so, if the lambda is larger if the small changes in the utility will lead to bigger changes uh, uh, changes in in his mix strategy. So, lambda is then interpreted often as a so, lambda is interpreted as a responsiveness of the player. But you can also uh, um, uh, interpret it in another way. So, can you tell me what happens when lambda is 0? Yeah. So, when lambda is what happens when lambda is 0 in this model? It becomes uniform right. If so, which means if lambda is 0, he, he is indifferent between everything. He does not care basically whatever be the utility, he is just going to blindly play a pure strategy uniformly at random. Okay. So, at, so when lambda is 0, you have 
a player who is com- who basically is uh, is indifferent uh, or or doesn't care in short a pathetic player essentially he doesn't care what about uh, about his utility or the what happens as lambda goes to infinity you get back the nash equilibrium so if as lambda goes to infinity so you these are ratios of uh, of uh, you know uh, things that of geometric series you can quickly check the one eventually the ones if the only ones that will get positive probability um, uh, so it's not nash equilibrium it actually gets it gives you best response so as lambda goes to infi- as lambda goes to infinity you get back best response so anything that is slightly suboptimal will get zero probability in the in as lambda goes to infinity okay so 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 uh, so the so and in, in fact it's possible to show this more generally also you take the quantile response equilibrium and let lambda go to infinity you get back uh, you know in a very in, you know in a very precise way you get back uh, you get back the nash equilibrium 